Welcome to the first episode of FI Spotlight. I'm your host, Susan Choi. Each week, we will feature a special guest to provide insights on a relevant topic in the food and beverage industry. Today, we'll be focusing on the state of labor relations in the U.S. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, union election petitions rose by 53% between October 2021 and September 2022. In addition, Cornell University found that more than half a million workers staged nearly 400 strikes during the first 11 months of 2023. It's clear that there's a disconnect when it comes to worker relations. So how can those in management effectively navigate employee relationships and vice versa? To help us explore this, I wanna welcome our guest, company leadership expert and CEO of plant-based protein products maker, Aloha, Brad Sharon. Brad, welcome to the show. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. OK, let's get us started. So um, first question, you know, as I was mentioning these statistics, there's clear frustration on the part of, um, you know, employees across the country in companies large and small, um, you know, combining that with a challenging economy, mass layoffs. You know, Brad, what is your take on where we are in the state of employee employer relations in the U.S. today? Well, look, Susan, it's a it's a great question. And um, and we're we're not a, I'm not a member of a union workforce. Um, I don't own my own factory, um, and so I don't imagine what uh, uh, the head of General Motors or uh, UPS or, or what they're thinking about Amazon as an example, Starbucks, you name it, where you have very very large workforces. Um, and uh, it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, obviously, to look at the, the disruption that's happened between the COVID pandemic, uh, inflation, supply chain uh, congestion, and chaos. Um, look, I think it comes back down to the relationship and the trust and the transparency that has to exist between workers and employers. And I think that the best companies are relatively clear, as clear as they can be, in terms of what success looks like uh, and how when one group wins, the whole company wins. I mean, that's how we've structured our company as an employee-owned company. It's not one department versus another. It's not misaligned incentives. It's when one group wins, we all win. And it relative, it, it, it's relatively consistent year over year. And so I think that that as uh, it is very difficult, there's still the labor pool is still in flux. Flux. We're still looking at the consumer price index uh, and what the changes are in terms of how it impacts people's daily lives. There's political discourse and tribalism. It's very difficult. But I, I go back to the fundamentals of business. Uh, employer employee has to be about transparency, innate fairness, and a win-win mentality. Going into potential root causes for the current disconnect and the frustrations, it is a big question, but I do want to hear your thoughts on it. What do you think could potentially be contributing to this current discord? Is it, do you think it's a generational thing? You know, you mentioned the pandemic. Is it that because of the consequences of the pandemic and the disarray that we're in because of, you know, because of the virus? Um, is it, you know, is it the changing needs of, you know, employees now versus the past? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, myriad, myriad reasons why. I mean, the world has changed upside down in the last five years. I don't think there's been as much uh, a topsy-turvy nature of, of the world in everyday life, not just macroeconomic and geopolitical and international and so forth, all the things we're used to as we grow older, understanding the root causes of things. But you're right, societal change, um, uh, generational expectations, uh, the remote workforce, people growing up in the remote workforce, uh, technology as a tool for, for, for good and for less good. I'm not going to say evil, but less good. Um, there's a lot of frustration and there's a lot of upheaval. And people, uh, most people by nature, um, like consistency, they like, they like transparency. They didn't like to know what to expect tomorrow to some degree. And so I think the amount of change that's happened over the last five years, exacerbated by numerous factors, uh, of both uh, expected or common, like political or, or international relations, and absolutely abnormal <laughs> pandemics and uh, once in a lifetime inflation. Um, it's obvious that there's still so much change and people are just trying to keep their boots on the, boots, uh, boots on the ground uh, and keep their families fed. It's no wonder that that seeps into everyday business.
Brad, you have decades of experience working with companies, large and small. You have run companies. You're currently running um, a company right now, you know, leading it, um, Aloha. Um, tell me, what is your, what could be your advice? You know, you mentioned, um, you know, consistency, transparency. You know, what are, what's one specific thing leaders can do and one specific thing employees can do to help foster a healthier working relationship? Yeah, it's a great question. I think from an employer standpoint, uh, what you can do is try not to move the goalposts. I think, you you know, we look at an annual review process, you look at whatever your cadence of time is in terms of what your T minus zero is versus what your, your ending point is. And I think the more consistent and transparent you can be there in terms of what winning means, I think that that provides employees a, a better understanding for what success looks like. And you got to assume that employees want to be successful. They want to thrive. They don't want consternation. They want to be, they want to enjoy and they want to learn and they want to grow, especially younger employees. Um, I think on the employee side, I think you also have to assume positive intent. I think there, there can't be an us versus them mentality. If so, it's all automatically by nature going to be combative. So I think positive intent, um, uh, you know, uh, I think it was to kill a mockingbird. You talked about seeing each other in each other's shoes. I think it's that kind of generational uh, aspect that needs to be thought about because at the end of the day, employers are people too. They're just in a different hierarchy or their different age experience or a different level of decision making. I think that positive intent is critical for employees. And I think that transparency and what success looks like for employers is mandatory. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's talk about Aloha, a protein, a plant-based protein products um, company, and um, interestingly, an employee-owned company, right, Brad? Can you explain to us, you know, what that means, what the structure of your company is like, and what motivated you to um, to, to lead this type of business? Yeah, look, it's a great question. You, there's many different designs uh, in terms of how companies get built. I have always just been of the belief that if you want people to run through a wall and you want to, you know, they have to have skin in the game. Um, it's hard enough being a startup competing against the best and biggest CPG consumer product goods companies in the world. Uh, they have the resources, they have the smarts, they have the experience, they have the scale, they have the relationships. What do you have? You have your employees. You have a great product, but you have your employees. And so designing a system uh, being employee owned uh, from day one, everyone that comes and starts work at Aloha is an owner. That owner mentality uh, pervades the entire company decision making structure. And I don't have to worry about incentives or intent. I know that they're going to look at it like their money. They're going to look at it like their product. They're going to have the same respect as you would a parent with a child. Um, and I think that just aligning incentive structure, uh, aligning the reward system with the expectation of what work and what mentality you're going to bring to the table. Um, considering the opportunity cost is great. Most startups fail. So building something from the ground up is difficult. You have to be fearless. You also have to be nuts to some degree. Like you have to have that mentality going in. And so aligning skin in the game was very important for me and setting the values and the structure of the company. Uh, and I think as we've grown and been even more successful, it, it's a hearkening back to people understanding that they're really working for each other not just for themselves and not just for the company, they're working for each other. And that provides the right incentive structure uh, to grow. So do you believe that this is the way to go in terms of company you know, structures across the board, across industries? Are employee owned companies the future? You know, what are your thoughts? I wish, I wish Susan, I wish, I wish, I wish that investors didn't want a certain return. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, look, as my dog goes crazy in the background, reflecting work in the twenty in the twenty second century, whatever it is, uh, twenty first century. Um, uh, I barely know what year it is. Uh, so I, I'd love that employee owned companies, um, whether they're ESOPs or whether they're like us, where it's just everyone's a shareholder. Uh, I wish there were more of them. I think it aligns for younger companies. It aligns the right um, uh, measurements and motivations. I really think it does. The question is, do you have altruistic investors on the other side? Do you have investors that it's not all about them and their return and their IRR? Are they interested in creating win-win scenarios? I'm fortunate I have that. Uh, not every company has that. So I think actually from a funding standpoint, from a, a governance standpoint, from the board of directors, 
If they can get behind the idea of creating win-win scenarios, providing accountability and transparency for employees, I think startups will be more and more successful um, because people are inherently motivated um, uh, by winning together. Uh, I'm a big believer in karma. And I think that these kind of companies that are employee owned have a larger share of karma, of karma uh, than other companies. All right, Brad Sharon, CEO of Aloha. Brad, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for all the insights. Thank you, Susan. And as always, you can check out all the great content that we've done by clicking on this playlist. Till next time, I'm Susan Choi. Take care and have a great weekend.